listen to remark from our team, Pak Purnawan. Time is your Pak Purnawan. Thank you, uh, Ibu Murtiati. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Best wishes to all of us. The Honorable Professor Mayumi Yamamoto from uh, Miyagi University, Japan. Thank you for being willing to join the seminar this morning and be a speaker. The Honorable Head of Department of History, Faculty of Humanities, all lecturers, students, and seminar participants who I respect. First of all, I would like to thank the Master of Time, uh, Ms. Mordiati, for giving me a great honor to deliver welcome speech in this good opportunity. <clears throat> On behalf of the Faculty of Humanities, Universitas Airlangga, I welcome you all and thank you very much for your coming to this seminar. <laughs> Especially to Professor Mayumi Yamamoto, I would like to thank you for your willingness to be speaker in uh, this seminar in this, in this morning. <clears throat> at, this, at this event, we can only meet through Zoom because the uh, pandemic uh, today. And I, I, I hope that in the future, when the pandemic is over, Professor Mayumi can be present in person in this Surabaya city. The topic of this seminar is very interesting about comfort women in Indonesian history. Topic about uh, comfort women is constantly being discussed but that is uh, never finished to be discussed because uh, it is very important topic. Uh, many experts have discussed this topic and one of them is Professor Mayo Miyamamoto from Miyagi University, Japan. Uh, Professor Mayo Miyamamoto is an anthropologist who has often researched about Indonesia. She is a uh, Indonesianist from Japan. And some for her writings about comfort women in Indonesia, uh, among others, one comfort woman in Indonesia a report on Dutch archival materials, uh, two whisper and guises, a uh, postscript to the Semarang comfort woman incident and heightened sexualities and secrecy of prestige, the development of military prostitution in Borneo, Kalimantan, and many other papers on almost the same topic. I hope uh, in this morning seminar goes well with uh, one discussion. Thank you very much uh, for all and for uh, Professor uh, Mayomi Yamamoto. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. <coughs> Terima kasih Pak Purnawan. Uh, welcome to the speech-nya. Uh, thank you uh, Pak Purnawan. Uh, we can see on uh, tomorrow with Vivek. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very busy uh, every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Ibu Mayumi, tomorrow we had uh, some uh, webinar too with Vivek Mirakanta. If you can join with this our webinar, you can on uh, nine o'clock in the morning, <laughs> but very early maybe. Yeah. Uh, terima kasih uh, untuk par semua participan yang hadir di sini. Selamat pagi. Uh, Ibu Mayumi, let me 
use with bahasa to say hello my participant. <coughs> Hari ini kita kedatangan tamu uh, yang sangat spesial, Ibu Mayumi Yamamoto, beliau dari Miyagi University. <coughs> beliau akan menyampaikan mengenai satu topik yang menarik mengenai unhidden history, uh, woman comfort in our history of Indonesia. Uh, <coughs> saya tidak akan berpanjang kata, uh, saya akan mulai diskusi ini karena pastinya akan menarik diskusi hari ini. So, uh, Ibu Mayumi, uh, maybe time is yours, you can start uh, your discussions today. Now, thank you. Can, can, I, can I share the PowerPoint with everyone? Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, thank you very much for the in wonderful introduction, pa uh, Pranawan, and thank you very much for inviting me go. here, Mo uh, Ibn Mo Modi, Modi, Modi Ati, Ati. And, Modi Ati. <laughs> and thank you, thank you very much for coming here, everyone, and then from the early morning, and my time is 10 o'clock, and your time is 8 o'clock, probably, so I'm taking quite a good advantage, and I'm really um, happy to sharing my research, and then the research was done a uh, long time ago, but continuously doing ex uh, explorations. And um, here is the topic we can share. And I try to making the uh, the lecture uh, rather, um, I shouldn't say short, me me medium amount. And then I would like to do in a discussion with the, the audience. And then if I can do in some kind of um, answer for, for some questions, and I think it might be more um, persuasive and people can understand what's going on. And I try to do that. So, um, can you see the PowerPoint? Yes, I yeah. see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So I, I think it's better to start because I tend to um, making my story longer. <laughs> so I talk long. So if you feel like this is too much and then just, let, uh, just uh, stop me. <laughs> uh, that today's topic is the unhidden forgotten history of comfort women in Indonesia. And based on this title, you may um, probably can understand what that means. Uh, the comfort woman, the history of the comfort woman is actually, it seems to some of the people, uh, suddenly appear like 1990s. However, the, um, the existence of the comfort woman and the history of the comfort woman is not, ha, did not uh, disappearing um, uh, even after the, immediately after the World War II. Um, it was just forgotten some of the people and and then, um, and then I would like to talk about it was not hidden, and it was just forgotten, maybe, <laughs> and and then that was actually appeared in document too. So so, um, and then I would like to focus in particular uh, comfort woman's case, <clears throat> a com comfort station's case. Um, as I said, 1990, and then, and then that was the uh, discourse was starting. The comfort woman's issue is became like issue. It's not history and a more likely political issue in these days. And the buzz of the discourse on comfort woman is actually starting uh, clearly in a political, political stage. On April 1st, 1991, House of Councils Budget Committee, meet, committee meetings in Japan, um, Motoka Shoji, a member of the House of Councillors, and also he is a, uh, the member of the Socialist Party at that time. And he actually brought the issue uh, on comfort women in political, political stage. But before that, the Japanese um, activist, in particular Christian-oriented activist, and also some of the um, human rights activists and also Korean Japanese uh, people uh, start to concern and start to talk about comfort women. And then that was actually reflecting this um, questions uh, or the, the uh, comment 
in in the uh, the budget committee meeting. <clears throat> what he said, I think that it is unmistakable fact that the Japanese government was involved and that the military engaged in taking Korean women away forcibly to become comfort women to the South. South meaning is to the South, South world <clears throat> from the Japanese. That means is the, um, the Indonesia is one, Singapore is another one, and Philippines is one, and, 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 and the Burma is two. And the South under the name of uh, Women's Volunteer Corps. And this is became the one of the biggest uh, trigger to making the um, the the comfort woman is became the more political issues. <clears throat> after state after this statement, and of course someone has to answer this statement, and then <clears throat> the minist ministry of the health, labor, and welfare answered that uh, statement and question, and and then. And then the answer was, there was no such things based on interviews with the elderly. They didn't research. They didn't actually answer immediately. <clears throat> and um, so, so this answer is actually making um, kind of mystified. It may not have any archival documents on comfort women. And the mystification is actually based on some of the belief, which is actually actually not only the belief that it was happens uh, immediately after the war. Japanese military actually burned some of the um, very sensitive document, but they didn't do it. Uh, the comfort woman's documents. There is there was some of the uh, the priorities, for instance, some of the pri pri prior top of the priorities related to political issues, directly political and military operations. And a comfort woman is at that time, it wasn't so sensitive and more likely the people actually know, but didn't talk about it. So the document is available still. And then that was some of the document might be burned but it wasn't intentionally burned and it wasn't classified as burning document. <clears throat> However, it's because of that rushing to answer without research and some of the people actually talking about the, uh, the, that was issues, that comfort woman issue was very sensitive and then that document was not existed. So based on that mystifications, and some of the activists and historians also uh, start to um, reconstructing the history of comfort women based on the interview, but not document. However, as I said, the document is existed and not only in Japan, but also the overseas as well. <clears throat> and based on the interview, comfort women's history was constructed and interview interviewees were uh, majority of the interview is a uh, comfort woman, former, former comfort woman. And the memory itself is actually um, sometimes influenced the public um, discourse. And so it was memory, memory became very fragile sometimes. But anyway, the, returning to the subject, comfort woman's issue, a uh, comfort woman's history was never actually um, disappeared. And also it wasn't hidden and the document was available. However, it's because of the politicization and, and very sensational ways. And also the, uh, rush, um, the, the rush answer of the, the questions by the bureaucrat and making a comfort woman's history became politicized. And um, as I said before, the existence of comfort woman has been well known since World War II. And some of the people in Indonesia, actually I witnessed existence of the comfort woman and, and uh, among the Indonesians and also the, the Dutch people as well. <clears throat> Archive document documents both in outside of the Japan exist. 
and military memoirs, and also the, some of the military personnel, and also the citizens uh, living in um, du during the World War II. And uh, those people actually left the memoirs. And then comfort women, they, they actually mention about comfort women occasionally. So all things um, based on those, it along with BC class Dutch tribunal documents in the case of in, uh, in case of the Indonesia, BC class Dutch tribunal document is available too. It's very official, and and then they actually did the interview uh, uh, with the comfort woman to making the case as a the legal case court case. So all things um, I would like to focusing a particular one uh, person and one comfort station's case, which became the uh, Dutch BC class uh, Dutch tribunal uh, case uh, in Indonesia. <clears throat> Are you okay so far? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the before going to the case, um, there is the one concrete um, um, uh, the Japanese um, Japanese document which is talking about the recruitment women for work in comfort stations, and that was actually written by um, and also the uh, stamped stamp approved by uh, Imamura Hitoshi and the general Imamura Hitoshi who is the um, the uh, commander of the 16th Army and to coming into the Indonesia, uh, the the um, uh, the the Java uh, later on, but he was actually writing this one March 4, 1938, and Department of Military Affairs in the military Ministry of Army, and the content was actually talking about the concerning about the, about the recruitment of women. And some of the recruitment was done by um, um, not unlicensed. I shouldn't use the word or the license, but the um, um, just a private um, private agent and using the military name and cheating the woman to become the uh, the prostitute. And and the military itself was very concerned. It's because that activities itself is. Uh, degrading the reputation of the military, and then they would like to keeping the military prestige at least. And also they are concerning about the chaos of the societies. The society might become paranoid and concerning about women. So what they, this, uh, what documents say is each expeditionary army, meaning is each place uh, sending the army, each society has um, uh, the the lo local situation is different different from place to place. For instance, during World War II, the situation is situation in Burma and Indonesia is quite different. Even the in Indonesia and Java, Sumatra, Borneo is different too. So it depends on the um, the the each um, the. Uh, the lo localities and each expeditionary army should carefully select comfort women's women recruitment agents, and <clears throat> and agents should be um, should be trustful and and they are not cheating the women. These army units should coordinate with Kempe and the police to avoid social problems. So making the social um, so, so social problems is. The meaning is the society is became became paranoid, like uh, the woman might taking away, <clears throat> or the some of the some of the people actually uh, cheating the woman to to sending um, um, some some unknown place that kind of uh, chaos and 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 should be uh, should be avoided. And so so this is one of the document quite earlier period of, um, uh, actually already existed. That was March 4th, 1994, 1938. <clears throat> and then, um, so that is the one of the document which is talking about the recruitment. And then from here, I would like to focusing on particular, uh, the comfort stations case. And then that was actually uh, 
the using the, the uh, using the BC class war tribunal um, document, and that was called the forced prostitution trial in in the Dutch BC class tribunal. And then the the person's name who was actually accused by uh, accused was, uh, was the uh, Aochi Washio, the Japanese person, <clears throat> and and some people might concerning about. Oh, is that okay to use an actual name? And then I, I kind of hesitated in okay, uh, hesitated in initial time, but he is very famous. He has been very famous. He was, uh, his this case was quite regularly appeared um, since 1970s, I think around that time. And, and also his case was very famous even immediately after the war. And the, case, the court case was also talking about among the, the Japanese, um, immediately post-war period, <clears throat> and then this uh, the the document I used this time is trial and the law report series, 1948. Um, that was uh, created by the Dutch, and the law report of the tri uh, of trials of war cr cr criminals, uh, 1949. That was created by the uh, British and then published in London. <clears throat> And um, this case was the, um, I, I think briefly I should talk about um, BC Class War tri Tribunal. And, and immediately post-war, the, their tribunal was actually established. And one tribunal is A-Class and BC Class is more likely not political. Uh, A-Class War Tribunal is focusing on the political political decision making, it's more likely big shot was com convicted. And the BC class was actually dependent on the local um, uh, local allied armies and militaries. So the Netherlands actually has a tribunal in the in Indonesia at the time. <clears throat> and one court was in the uh, Batavia and they called the Batavia Tribunal, Temporary Tribunal. And the other one is the one in Borneo, one in Sulawesi, and uh, the other one is Sumatra, and then the other one, one more, one more place is actually existed. I forgot. Anyway, uh, this is one of the talking about the forgotten. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the the fifth. Uh, this case was the Batavia uh, court case in the Dutch BC class white uh, what what tri uh, the class tribunal temporary court. <clears throat> the fifth trial case and the first civilian case in the BC class Batavia Tribunal, and the case accused uh, the the um the they accused Aochiwashio as as the worst war, uh, forced prostitution case, and um he was the um operated or the uh, the based on the uh, the the raw report it said. Uh, hotel keeper, um, but he is manager of the Sakura Club brothel, and um, that was operated from September 10, 1943 to September 1945. Aochi Washio was also um, uh, had the restaurant called the Salon Akebono in Og and, and then he opened it in August 1942. But the case this case is focusing on Sakura Club Brussels um, um, case, not the uh, the restaurant Salon Akebono's um, Akebono. That was not the, the case um, in the uh, uh, forced prostitution case. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the court in the court October 23, uh, 23 1946, he was convicted and sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. November 26, 1946, sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. And then um, he actually died December 1946 uh, uh, in prison. And some of the uh, the Japanese memoir, some Japanese memoir is talking about that was commit suicide, but there is no evidence whatsoever. So I just write, um, he died in prison. The time he was in prison, at the, uh, the time he was uh, the, uh, putting into the court, he was age 60. 
And then this is kind, this is, I shouldn't say background, but this is, this is the case. And so that we can actually have a detailed document with the uh, testimonies of the victims of the uh, forced prostitutions. And I said he had a uh, the, uh, uh, the restaurant, and then this is the uh, the picture of the uh, the restaurant he actually um, operated, and it's called the Salon Akebono. And then it's kind uh, the this picture is coming from the Niad in the Amsterdam, and the Akebono was opened in 1942, as I said stated before. And the similar picture is available. This is the other one, and there are um, there are so many women and who looks like the uh, Eurasian and 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 pure Dutch is probably this person might be the middle person might be pure Dutch. I um, but but it's more likely mixed people and 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 this is during the the uh, during a wartime situation. And it's supposed to be Dutch and Japan was fighting each other, but uh, and also the some of the women and the civilian civilians are putting into the internment camp. It's because of they are they are enemy citizen, but it looks like um, they are having fun and then they are working working there. Um, and um, before talking about. Um, uh, the Sakura Club case, and I would like to briefly introduce who is uh, who who is who is what Aoichi Washioka, Washio. and then he <clears throat> he was actually uh, living in Batavia before the World War II, and this is also available. The docu document is available, and it's not Aoichi Washio's document. It's more likely coming from all sorts of the information scattered through and putting together and one of the document uh, one of the important uh, important um book is talking uh book was uh, written by shiotani iwazo and then that was the memoir of me memoir by shiotani iwazo she uh shiotani was working in used to work in the um the uh uh the uh the south uh south south research institution in taiwan um and then uh, he did, he worked hard to making, um, 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 I forgot the name, <laughs> uh, the one of the book, uh, he actually finished one of the book. Um, and then uh, he actually got some kind of reward uh, from his, um, his, uh, uh, his boss. And then he was sent to Indonesia and and then joining to the uh, the university and he actually studied about law and he stayed in indonesia one year and of course the time he was in indonesia he actually moving around traveling around indonesia at the same time he studied about indonesian law <clears throat> but he actually wrote quite a detail of the um the diary and then and Shiotani was was a memoir is actually based on a diary, and then he actually took quite a lot of picture, and then uh, the memoir was actually um, edited by the uh, Goto Kenichi professor, uh, professor Emerita Goto Kenichi, and and then some of the picture was actually hold by uh, hold hold by uh, Goto Goto Ken, professor Goto Kenichi, but anyway, that is one of the major information source, and another one is the the um uh the japanese community uh, pre war period they have the organization it's called the jagatara tomonokai jagatara friendship organization and then they actually publishing the um the the memoirs as well as the uh, pictures series at uh, the albums and then that is another source and also the um the um i used the Japanese Japanese newspaper published in uh, Indonesia in, in Batavia um, before the before the World War II. So so all all things is coming coming together, and also the court case uh, the time of the court case are uh, taking place. They actually checking the background um his each each person's background, and then there is one uh one uh one uh, uh the uh, 
well, one no notification of the who the uh, uh, the age of the Aochiwashio and and where he is coming from. <clears throat> but actually, that is the uh, all come all all document is actually uh, checking uh, same times and then I selected the um, more trustful information. Aochiwashi was actually born in Nagasaki and and then um, I I actually has the uh, his his um, the uh, hometown address as well. <clears throat> that is the um, government um, document, so it's very um, trustful. And and he we I cannot find when he actually came to Batavia, but the um, it was Korea 1920 20. He actually he was in Batavia at the time, and even the court document was writing 1920. He came to Batavia, but I really do not know because that is the BC Class War Tribunal uh, court document only, and there is no such information is available. However, the existence and also the presence of the Washio was really. Um, outstanding after 1930. He opened a Suwa Hotel, successor of the Matsumoto Hotel, which had, he, which had opened just a year earlier, but he was taking over. And then uh, he basically um, management of the Suwa Hotel. Suwa Hotel is one of the, um, um, the best hotel um, among the Japanese tourists and also the Japanese um, businessmen who stayed, uh, who living, who started living in um, Batavia. <clears throat> and so, so Sua Hotel has appeared quite a lot of memoirs, um, the people who actually had the experience in Batavia before the World War II, meaning is not, uh, starting from 1930s. <clears throat> September, uh, September to November 30, 1941, Japanese repat repatriation started. And it's you can understand why. It's because of the war is coming 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 soon. So the Japanese, Japan and, and that relationship is actually broken September 1941. And the Japanese government and um, warned Japanese people to repatriate it back to Japan. Aochi wasn't didn't want in going back long period of time, and it seems to me. And it's because of the Aochi actually took the, the ship, the final uh, final boat, repatriation uh, boat to, to, to Japan that was the left Batavia on November 30, 1941. <clears throat> so and um, so this is a very, very, very brief uh, sketch of the, the Aochiwashio. And then um, you can actually see the, um, the, his activities and what kind of hotel he actually took over. And that was the, uh, the, the this advertisement is coming from the uh, Java Nippo and Java basic newspaper among the Japanese, Japanese newspaper in, in, in Java, published in Java. And then, um, and one is April 4 and 1929. And then the other one is May 2nd, May 2, uh, May 2nd, 1929. Uh, April 4th is talking about the open, Matsumoto Hotel just open. And, and then that hotel is located, uh, Molen Fleet uh, East to 2027. 20, so I can show the um the weather is eventually the, the I, I can show the map eventually. <clears throat> so and and then this is also the Matsumoto Hotel. But this hotel was and also this had this hotel has a phone number. And and then at that time telephone is very expensive. So you can imagine how wealthy hotel it was. However, this hotel was actually changing the name and taking over by um, um, the Aochiwashio. And, and a side, side uh, memo, side, side, side story is the owner of the Matsumoto Hotel is coming from Nagasaki City as well and where the Aochiwashio is coming from. So they may knew each other and then Matsumoto Hotel's owner decided to passing this hotel facilities to 
Aochiwashio, and Aochiwashio changing the name, I have to actually study and research more. <clears throat> And then uh, announcement that Matsumoto Hotel changed to the Suwa Hotel, Java Nippo, March 20, 1930. So one year, nearly one year later, the Matsumoto Hotel changed to the uh, Suwa Hotel. And then um, the Aochi was the managers. And then this is opening announcement. And then um, the address is here, Molen Freed in the East Oost 27. And, and then the phone number is here uh, so they changed the phone number <clears throat> so so they can actually put in the um the hotel information um in the japanese newspaper and this is uh, the place uh, the map and then it's coming from um jagatara tomonokai Jap uh, be, uh, the um the the japanese uh, diaspora community in indonesia and um and then they have the um, the old friendship organization, and then they actually published Jagatara Kanwa. It's the story about the, about the Jagatara, and 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 in, and in talking about uh, the Dutch East Indies, uh, Japanese people's um, uh, 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 footsteps, and then published 1978. And Suwa Hotel was located here. And and then the in front of uh, this is um, uh, the uh, I think probably you can um, you can you, can you see the uh, the the alphabet English or the, the Indonesian here? Uh, this is Kota Station 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 Kota, and then and then this is the the Indonesian President House and the Palace, and this is Gambil. You know where that is probably, and then the street of the Gajamada, and Pintu Bisar, uh, and and this area is Grodok, and then this is Jaran Tengara, and and the in uh, the around here there is a Japanese society and also the Japanese elementary school, and and then. If you go into the Jagan, Jagan Tenga, Tengang, and just straight ahead, Suwa Hotel is located. This is Suwa Hotel. So it's very convenient for the Japanese people because Japanese organization is here, elementary school here, it's a heart of everything, Kota Station is here, and the Gangbyo is here. So, so it's easy to move around. And, and then, um, so he actually took Aochiwashio is actually managing this hotel, and then um, and then he became very much like the center of the communities, uh, the part of the center of the community, Japanese community. And this is the advertisement of the Sua Hotel in 1943, April 4, December 3rd, um, nine, uh, yeah, 1938. Um, the it's. Java Nippo changed the name to the Toindo Nippo. So, so it's the Japanese newspaper, but continue, continue to the um, Toin, Toindo is the East, uh, Dutch East Indies, and Nippo, December 38. So, so even the before the war time, it's still ongoing. His business is work, um, mo moving good ways. <clears throat> and then Aochi, and then and this is one of the picture coming from the um, um, Professor Goto, and uh, uh, he even didn't recognize this is actually the, this the, this picture was actually in, including the Aochiwashio, and but Aochiwashio on 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 car, and occasionally he drove for his friends and hotel customers to the beach, and sometimes he took some. The Japanese person who would like to going back to Japan, and 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 and, and, and but uh, Japanese woman who used to be the mistress of the Dutch person, and going back to Japan, but he she doesn't have the car to go into a good transportation system to go into um, uh, the the port. So he actually drove drove to the the port for for her as well. And Aochiwashio is this person, and and. That, and some people say, how do you know that? 
<laughs> yes, that's a good question if you question about it. And it's because of the, uh, this is coming from Shiotani Iwazo's uh, the photo album. And Shiotani was carefully writing in uh, pencil um, who they are. And then he actually wrote down Aochi, Aochi wa Shio. And so, so we, I, I could immediately figure out uh, that's, that's him. And so he was very friendly and he could speak Indonesian language and he had a friend, Chinese friend, and he, he can a little bit understand the Dutch as well. And, and he, he, he is relatively speaking, um, uh, what do you call it, outgoing person. And, 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 and this is a wonderful time for him being in Indonesia, I, I think. And as I stated, and it's because of the war is coming and he has to repatriate to Japan. And he was, a lot, he was taking the last, last, po, uh, last boat to going back to Japan. So this is a bigger picture. And however, he had opportunity to return to Jakarta. I changed Batavia to Jakarta. Some of the people can immediately recognize um, the, the meaning of the Japanese occupation in Indonesia time. They changed the, the, the name of the city from Batavia to Jakarta and he returned to Jakarta. He actually, uh, June, June 1942, um, on order of 16 army, Aochi returned to Jakarta. And the, it was very unusual um, order or the request from the 16 armies because he was at that time, the age already, his age was already 50s. The Japanese military didn't want in sending back to Indonesia uh, elderly people. At the time, 50s is not really young. So they would like to, they prefer to sending back the younger, younger, uh, younger people and instead of the older people. And the reason why the military would like to um, have a former Japanese resident in Indonesia back to Indonesia is because of they can understand Indonesian language, they can understand culture, they can be a good inter in interpreter of the culture and language. So in order to governing the Indonesia, and they need someone who actually are familiar with Indonesian societies. And Aochi Washio is one of the person. However, military also concerned those former uh, resident has a great network, great human relations. They may have the tendency, they may have, they may ten, tend to, or they, they uh, the, the military concerned, they may co convert it to become the spy for those people, the friends. And it's because of the local network. So the military actually relocating the Japanese, former Japanese resi resident to the different locations. It's not the same place. But Aochi's case, not only the aged at Aochi was can could return to Indonesia, but at the same times he returned to Batavia, meaning the, the Jakarta, the same place. And so, so it was very unusual. Um, but he actually happy to return, probably. He didn't say anything happy to return. This is my interpretation totally. And sometimes I put in my interpretation. So don't confuse. When I interpret it, I will put in my interpretation. So don't confuse. But anyway, um, this, is the, uh, this is coming from the, um, the, the, uh, the testimony by the, the Aochi. And then the mayor of the Jakarta requested the Aochi open restaurant, Salon Akebon, as, as I said, and as I show the, uh, the picture. And he actually um, get, uh, and then in a Salon Akebono, you actually seen people are actually working. Those service girls worked until 11 p.m. They are not prostitute. They are not working for the sex service. They are actually waitress. And Aochi gets no um, there, this beer host, Poppy Eckhart Morning Camp. And then those people are actually became uh, the one of the uh, significant figure, the time of the time Aochi decide to, has, has to decide to open um, the Sakura Club brothel. 
April, in April 1943, um, the, the algae started to live with this, this beer, beer host. This beer host and the poppy egg had, has really um, had bad, bad relationship and they are fighting each other and algae had so much problem because they are, they're supposed to be in a good friend and taking care of girls. But uh, since they are fighting each other and then uh, eventually um, algae actually prefer work, working with Reese beer host instead of Poppy Eckhart. But anyway, um, <clears throat> 1943, April, um, he started to live with Liz, Liz beer host. In uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, the document, the one uh, the uh, tri tribunal document, um, one of the document is stating as the um, um, the beer Liz beer host as a lover or the mistress, but I do not find any kind of evidence or the testified by anyone they are actually had some relationship but they are living together and uh, june 2nd 1943 received an order from gunse kanbu to open brothel for civilians that is called the sakura club sakura in japanese uh sakura sakura is cherry blossom in japanese of course and then in during the japanese occupation in in indonesia Military people are actually wearing the uniform. Japanese uh, civilians who uh, civilians coming to uh, Indonesia for helping um, uh, as a bureaucrat or the companies for the companies, and they are putting the the mark uh, the uh, the cherry blossom mark on the uh, the um some kind of the um embroideries or the, the drawing of the sakura was actually putting in. So in among the Indonesians, uh, those people are called as sakura, the meaning is citizen, uh, civilians, not a military person. But anyway, that might be indic indication of the sakura club. Sakura club, this brothel is particularly for the civilians. And, and it didn't say anything about Japanese civilians, and, but basically indication of the sakura, some people might thinking about the Japanese. But the, some of the customers are actually Koreans and some of them are Chinese. And, but anyway, uh, this is the club was open. Uh, club was ordered to open. Aoji had to go to the Kempe office twice because he refused to open it. He refused that request. On the second visit, he was beaten by Kempe. His leg was broken due to the Kempe's violence and one leg became shorter. Beer host suggested that the person who was living with the, uh, the Aochi, suggested Aochi agree in order to stop Kempe's violence. And he, even he, she said, well, if you re refuse, continuously refuse, they might kill you. And beer host voluntarily took charge of brothel management. So uh, beer host convincing Aoji, you have to say, yes, I will take care of the entire management. So don't worry about it. There were three more civilians managed um, military brothel in Jakarta, but the Sakura Club was the only brothel accused of uh, practicing forced prostitution. And um, so this is the, um, the very brief, um, this, the, uh, <clears throat> Very brief, uh, very brief uh, history of the uh, process of the how, why the Aoji Washio opened the, um, the Sakura, Sakura Club brothel. Uh, this is the returning to the, um, the not Sakura Club, but uh, it's the restaurants. Restaurant is actually not only the Aoji Washio's restaurant, but uh, actually uh, the restaurant was actually exist, uh, the open. The one of the restaurant is Indonesian restaurant. It's called Midori, and Midori is green in Japanese. So Sarong Midori, Sarong Green, is actually Indonesian. They are serving Indonesian food, and that was appeared. This announcement was appeared Unabara Japanese military newspaper, <clears throat> July 16, 1946, uh, 1942. It's quite early a period. They actually opened the, the restaurant. <clears throat> Excuse me, a Chinese food restaurant Salon Sakura is actually open too. This is Salon Sakura. It's not a Sakura Club. So this is a restaurant 
not the, uh, the brothel. But it looks like if someone is seeing this picture in a salon sakura, some might confuse or some might be uh, mistakenly uh, announced this is the brothel, scenery of the brothel, but it's not. It's the, uh, the, the women are actually waitress and then they are actually serving the food. Um, it's it's uh, the location of the uh, the Grodok Grodok Plain, and then it's um, uh, the that was open July 16, and then this is opening information of the um, Una, uh, August 21st 1942 advertisement of Saron Nake Bono. So, so Indonesian restaurant is available, Chinese restaurant is available, and Nake Bono is focusing on the Western food. And uh, the around the time they actually opened, the, even though that was occupation period, uh, still the Java itself was not um, getting high tensions between enemies, meaning is allied and the Japanese. And uh, this is the um, the drawing by Ono Saseo. And uh, this is also the one. <clears throat> So you can see in it, it's not so much difference as ordinary time in the Japanese military occupation period. In particular for the, um, the, uh, the Dutch and Eurasian populations. However, eventually it's going to become like this. They are putting into the internment camp. This is a Singapore scenery, but it's the similar things is taking place. The enemy's citizen was putting into the uh, one in term, uh, one uh, the uh, the uh, the internment camps, and then they are actually uh, organized uh, the um, supervised by campus. So the Japanese occupied Indonesia, allied nation Japanese allied nation is Japanese enemy around 1943, living in civilians internment camps. These internees could not freely go out of camp, need Japanese guarantor in order to go outside of the camp. Internment camps were supervised by Kempe. And that was 1943, around 1943. The returning to probably some of the people still remember when Sakura Club was open, that was 1943, September. So it was already the, uh, the allied people, uh, the civilians are putting into the internment camp. They couldn't go out and without having a guarantor, the Japanese guarantor, or they may have the permission from the Kempe. So the Kempe became the key person to getting some kind of permissions. And then the Aochiwa Shio and also the beer host was actually correcting, collecting the people coming out from the internment camp. Sakura Club was formed and then uh, 14 women worked and two were underaged. One was 12 and the other was 14. And 12, aged 14 and age 12, um, girls are coming from Sumaran and, and then they are actually um, rec recruited, um, not immediately, immediately open time, but the later on they are actually recruited. <clears throat> um, basically recruited, but with, with um, some um, misinformation, um, basically cheated. Um, Except the two underage girls, all women were brought from civilian internment camps. Um, so Aochiwashio became guarantor and they can actually get in the campus approval and then they are putting into the, um, the uh, Sakura Club working condition. Some of them are willing to work at the brothel due to the need for the financial stability for their ch children. And some of, the, some of the women are actually used to work as a, the prostitute. And um, and the um, and and however, some some wanted to quit, but Louise Beer Host told them she would have to report that to Kempe. This became a major threat for comfort women. So those women, these women, uh, these women did not have freedom to even freedom freedom to even quit the job. 
they are they are enemy citizen. You have to know that. So so if they quit the job, no matter what, Aotearoa has to report it uh, to the Kempe because Kempe has to put, uh, trace back where those enemy citizens are. But even though that is administrative duties and administrative, uh, what do you call the regular procedures, the women, even though those women men knew that was actually has to do that, and then they have to, they they cannot freely moving around, even quit the job. However, still the world of the Kempe is very threat, uh, frightening. And as I said before, the Kemp, uh, the Kempe actually uh, called up Aochiwashio the time they requested the opening the Sakura Club. So that is the not only the focusing on the, not only the Kempe is the not only the, the threatening to the the enemy citizen, nor probably Indonesia might also the same same feeling again uh, towards the Kempe, but also Japanese people are actually concerning about Kempe's behavior. So, however, uh, the the uh, acceptance of that least beer host um, announcement is probably quite threatening for those women. So this became one of the, uh, the accused reasons uh, for the forced prostitutions. Aochi Washio's case, the case was well known and then and based on the testimony, Aochi didn't involve the management, that was clear. And, um, and, and however, um, Aochi was the, uh, 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 Ouch was actually getting a sentence, convicted and a sentence. It's because of the he is the uh, the uh, the manager and the leader of the um, the Sakura Club, the brothel. So he has the um, he he should have the responsibility um, of the taking care of the the management. But three uh, and then um, Uh, so finally, and then uh, as I stated, the Aochiwashio's case and a ten years a ten years sentence imprisonment. After finishing Aochi's case, three months later, the European woman Lise Beerhost and Poppy Eckhart were actually convicted in Dutch militaries. Uh, Poppy Eckhart and and Moen Camp was convicted in Dutch Dutch military courts. And this is not temporary court. Temporary court is particularly enemy citizen from the Dutch eyes. That means the Japanese are the are the the uh, the the um the subject. But here is Dutch military martial court of the Dutch was uh, ordinary people that the, the uh, European citizen is actually um, um, putting into the court case. So those people are actually putting into the court convicted. And then um, and, uh, the, the Poppy Eckhart in particular um, taking um, uh, her, her entire um, uh, property and also the asset was actually taken away. And he, she also getting the sentence three, I, as I remember three, three years sentence. So that was take that was happens and and based on this movement, quick movement, um, I do not have. This is coming from my interpretation. The reason why that was so much um, interested in and 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 also they would like to do in smoothly and quickly finishing the um, uh, doing Ouch's case. It's because of that you would like to convict it those European women who who can see, who could see as a tra tra uh, traitor or the betrayer um, of the Dutch people. Um, and then Dutch might, and, and uh, around, the touch, that, around that, that time, Dutch was hating each other and based on the archival document. So, so uh, based on that so social sentiment, that court military martial court would like to actually giving um, uh, the case uh, quicker, swiftly, and quickly, quickly as possible before they are those women are repatriated back to the Europe. So, um, so this is the history of comfort women had been never hidden but forgotten for decades. 
Thank you very much for listening. And probably there are so many uh, questions and I'm, this is open to the public. I would like to answer the question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ibu Mayumi. Nice presentations and nice explanations today. So <clears throat> I invite our, our participants to ask uh, Ibu Mayumi about this topic because I think every remembering Pramutya Ananta Tour, uh, <clears throat> he published two in a novel, such like a novel, but uh, may, uh, if I, I don't wrong, about the Perempuan Galam Cengkraman Militer. Uh, I think it's very, very uh, Nice a novel because novel arts uh, tell told me about the such like uh, Ibu Mayumi say about the comfort woman that but uh, Pramudya uh, <coughs> uh, sources in inter interview uh, sources mm -hmm. in when he uh, he he live in uh, Pulau Buru. I think it's yeah that's the same I think in the same conditions. Well, uh, saya mengundang Bapak Ibu di sini mahasiswa untuk bisa bertanya kepada Ibu Mayumi silakan bisa raise hand bisa menuliskan di dalam chat room silakan. Maybe Please. while waiting for other people, <laughs> I can ask one easy question. Yeah, sure, Pak Proto, silakan. Okay. Please. Uh, at the beginning, you mentioned uh, the recruiting agents. Um, is Auchi Washio a recruiting agent? And can you give any other information about recruiting agents in? Uh, Indonesian comfort stations. Could you hold on a second? <laughs> I, I have the government uh, sending some information because I'm quarantined. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Sorry. I, okay. Um, can you repeat it again? Yeah. You mentioned uh, recruiting agents mm. at the beginning of the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, uh, Aochi Washio considered a recruiting agent? Um, and uh, can you give any other information about other recruiting agents uh -huh. for comfort stations? Uh -huh. uh, uh, the, the case of the Aochi Washio or the case in general? Uh, in... in is is he a is he a recruiting agent officially? That's part one. And number two is um, uh, who would be carefully chosen as recruiting agents in mm -hmm. Indonesia? Okay. Um, Aochi was shows uh, the Sakura Club are actually formed by the Eurasian and Dutch people, and then it's coming from the internment camp, and the person who actually need to communicate with women, and 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 then the and then. Uh, uh, talking to the woman, this is not so um, so hard work and then that kind of things. And Aochi Washio Sakura Club's agent was actually the least beer host. And, and, then, and she is the person who actually convincing the woman to become the comfort woman and actually giving information to the comfort woman uh, uh, to, uh, for the work. So, so this is the one, and then the major person is the the, the spear horse. There is one person too, uh, one another person. Um, the this uh, um, uh, what is what is her name? But there is another person too. But the major person is the spear horse. Um, did I answer the question? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I was I was wondering because you you mentioned uh, Imamura um, issuing regulations and, right, and right. basically that, saying they hmm. have to choose the agent carefully. Right, and right. Would, would the Sixteenth Army choose uh, 16th, Lee Bearhow, uh, okay. of course, or how? Okay. how what is Sixteenth Army actually choosing to the uh, Aochiwashio because Aochiwashio has a good reputation and a very stable, trustful guy, and then uh, he he did. And, and then, but he didn't want to open the brothel. And then 
these beer hosts actually taking a charge of the to become the um uh became the uh the the recruitment recruitment agent and also the running the brothel itself too but um the this is a condition that it's more like a hierarchical and then and then it the it's not really order from the Auchi, but Auchi is supposed to be ordered by the military. So Auchi has to have the responsibility to taking care of the entire things. But I, I think probably Auchi didn't did didn't want to involve. So so he actually neg neglected to do that. Okay, and then real quickly, any other places like Samarang uh, incident, um, who would be recruiting agents there? Smara incident? Yeah, yeah. They, I know the, 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 there there were what four brothels or whatever in Samara. Uh, 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 so who who would be the official uh, recruiting agents there? And then you have stuff in the chat room, I think. So but. is this Smara incident or Smara the, so, the two under under girls? recruited by the smart no 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 smart incident, uh, smart not, incident. Not what you talked about today okay smart incident is more involved the local police and also the uh the the police itself and then this is more uh uh so it's it's not um it's more systematically military directly involved and it's it's local military not 16 16th, 16th army's um gunse and and the policeman involved, and then Kempeta involved, and then and then also the camp leader also involved and let go. Basically, camp leader already getting information and a kind of hint. They would like to the Japanese military, uh, Japanese policeman and Kempeta looking for the young woman to become the uh the uh, uh young woman and working working at work working young woman to work and then and the indication was very very big but some smart camp leader that woman who became the camp leader and also japanese camp uh, um, uh supervisor and some of the Japanese supervisor knew and they actually refused. One camp was refused by Japanese and some of the camp was refused by the uh, Dutch camp leader. And then and among the Dutch women who was in turn refused and, and, and must not demonstration, but the, um, uh, massively they said no. And then everyone is coming and protecting the young girls. But anyway, uh, the the major vehicle and ma major person to uh, recruiting that incident, uh, that small and small and comfort women's uh, four stations were um, done by Japanese police, Kempeitai, and the local police, and also the camp leaders. And and I would like to adding some of the information about underage. Um, um, the the <coughs> Immediately after Samaran fa famous, uh, notorious, the, the Samaran incident was taking place, the area of the middle, mid, mid Java became, became rather uh, paranoid and, and, and concerned. And um, because they cannot trust in policemen, they cannot trust, trust, trust Kempetai as well. And be, be, this beer host, and then one more person visiting to the, uh, the, the, um, the Samaran. And then they they talk to the uh, girl, those girls' mother, and and also the girls as well. You have to think about um, you have to think about the uh, the, uh, the moving the girls to someplace else. And if the policeman and the kempeta is coming, and they might taking you and cheating you to the uh, sending to the outer island instead of being here. So instead of outer island, they choose and they depend on and they trusted uh, the Dutch woman and because they are actually communicating each other and they are same citizens probably. But anyway, they're actually putting, uh, sending to the 12 years old and 14 years old girl uh, to the, uh, to the uh, along with um, be, these beer host and then they actually converted to comfort woman. During the sending time, uh, during during the they became the comfort woman. These beer hosts told them, please do not tell your 
actual age to the aochiwashio that was appeared in the court case uh, testimony as well so so they are actually quiet and then they they basically aochiwashio didn't know they are under age maybe they uh, he might already feel that um, the 12 age and 17 years old is quite different but anyway um he, based on his testimony, he didn't know, he didn't get any information. And then that was really true because those girls was testified and then they actually stopped to say the actual age to the Aochiwashio and then in any other people. So so the beer host was using that Samaran instant very much strategically to recruiting younger women from the middle central central Java. Well, Arta, how about this answer, Igumayumi? <laughs> Is there okay. any? Yeah, well, we have more time, but uh, we see in our chat room, Igumayumi, uh, one question from Ibununu from Department of Japanese <coughs> Studies in UNER. Uh, you can see that's the request. You hold on a second. Interesting presentation. My name is no, no. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. uh, I'm wondered how Japanese teach the issue of Jugun Yang for in history subject in school. Ah, and how do you think about the different differences acceptance of Korean and Indonesian regardless of the issue of Jugun Yang? Thank you. Okay. Um, this is one of the things I really had a problem. <laughs> 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 um, the um, I'm taking the side of the scholar, and then I'm taking the side of the I'm anthropologist and historians both, and 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 once talking about the school school uh, textbook issues, it's going to become more political, and and also the social reaction is existed, and. Uh, People actually talking last 25 years, people talking about the young food quite a lot, but they're repeating the same things over and over again. And, and, and some of the things, some, some, sometimes in the, in the United States is extremely uh, problematic. And one of the scholar is actually bringing um, uh, the evident meaning is documental document, documentation with documentation and evidence. And then um, the, I think some of the people already knew, some people say the comfort woman as a licensed, military licensed prostitution, prostitute. And then the, um, the Japanese uh, historians, um, in particular East Coast people, uh, with, uh, are profusely upsetting. And, and it's because of they are not, uh, that person is not using a forced prostitution. And um, however, um, if the comfort woman is just forced prostitution, I use the word of forced, pro, just forced, just is it's because of if the forced prostitution is equal to the comfort woman, there are so many forced prostitution is existed all over the world from the history. It's not unique. So if the forced prostitution equal from comfort woman, why Japanese, Japanese government ha, has to apologize over and over again? This is probably someone might point it out and nobody done it yet. License to prostitution meaning is Japanese government guarantee and giving a permission. That means Japanese government and military responsibility using the term of the licensed prostitution is more um, strategic in terms of the getting political attentions, but they are going to the quite different direction. It's because of, as I said, buzz of the discourse on comfort woman started. They use the word forcibly taking away and the word was al always used. So that is became one of the staple for the, uh, the one of the label for the comfort woman. But anyway, so the, uh, the textbook itself is not really my issues. It was, I think that the, um, <clears throat> the education oriented people should think about it. 
it's not my side. <laughs> and that's the answer. Sorry. <laughs> And then um, the difference is acceptance of, of the Korean and the Indonesia. I do not know the, uh, the reaction of the Indonesian uh, society right now. Um, and, but I, one thing I can tell, the time I came to the Indonesia first time to doing a research was an interview with a comfort woman, former comfort woman. I think the people who are actually dealing with comfort women in Indonesia already knew the person's name, uh, Bumaldiam. And I met her quite many times. And the first time I met her was 1990, 1992, uh, the, just starting the LBH, uh, Jakarta LBH, started correcting the people who used to be the comfort woman. And, and then um, I did accidentally met Bumaldiam at that time there. And, and then, she was quite relaxed at the time. And then the time comes, come, comes through and she is really became, um, it's not cheerful. It's very much, uh, serious. she became really showing the face of the serious face. It, and, but the beginning of the time I talked to her, she was actually talking about the history, uh, the, the, her past, very frankly. And 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 a, and a kind of cool looking, and it's because she was she was smoking tobacco. <laughs> and I don't I don't smoke tobacco, but at the time I saw her, and I thought, wow, that's cool. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and um, the I think some of the people already knew uh, the that the Elbeha's movement was actually centered by the Jogja, and but the um, the the request or uh, the correction uh, the the collecting the uh, what do you call it the um they actually studying uh, the the comfort, former comfort women's um uh, uh, who who the comfort former comfort woman is and and that was starting from uh, that was coming from coming request from the the Kyoto uh, the lawyers group visiting to the, um, Bata, uh, the, the Jakarta, El Veja, that it's a headquarter. And then they asked the Jakarta headquarter, I forgot his name, but uh, I did the interview too. And then, and then he, at, at that time, 1992, it wasn't so much movement yet. And he saw, um, I, he passing the information and, but he didn't think about this is really important. It's not going to become uh, anywhere, <laughs> but Jogja Elveha decide this is need to um, need to um, uh, the correcting informations. So so this is the situation, and then, and then after that the things is changing through time in Indonesia, and so I can't tell the Indonesian reaction and also the um, um, in in terms of the. Um, the comfort woman's um, issues. And I can actually, um, I can be, I, I, I read some of the uh, discussions, but I didn't see so much changing uh, taking place. It's very much similar discourse ongoing. And then uh, Korean, Korean case, uh, reaction of the Korean, recently Korean reaction is changing quite a lot. Um, of course, majority of them are, I, I think, the um, asking an apology to the Japanese government and a compensation to the uh, to the comfort woman. And but some of them are actually not really the same ways. It's more like diverse, and uh, starting diverse. I'm teaching in the, uh, I'm teaching this subject occasionally to the international student. Um, in my class in Waseda University, uh, uh, the student is not. The Japanese student only. It's the coming from Korea, Taiwan, China, Indonesia, um, Vietnam, and in England, America, and France. When I doing um, concrete documentation and then historical background, they can understand what's going on. It's not going to become the political discourse. With it's not going to be. They are not going to discussing the way of the political discourse is actually 
um, actually um, manipu manipulating. <laughs> and so, so it's not like talking about the force and not force. And and text textbook issue is one of the things. So so they actually concerning about history away from the politics as well. And so this did I answer the question, Ibu Nunu? Uh -oh, thank you, thank you, <laughs> Ibu Mayumi. A very clear answer, I think. Uh, but if I may add uh, my opinion in mm -hmm. the Korean society, uh, especially the biggest. Uh, thing, uh, the different thing with Indonesian society, I think they all they are keeping produce jigungyan uh, for issues uh, to be a consumption of popular uh, on popular media. I think mm -hmm. uh, in film, drama, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and we cannot find the same thing in Indonesia. I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, as an anthropologist, uh, how do you think about it? Uh, any social or um, cultural background, uh, the difference between Korean and Indonesia, why one society keep producing the issue of uh, this? I mean, it, it is a shameful issue for uh, some women, I think. But Indonesia keep uh, hide it or we don't want to listen it anymore or I, I do not know actually the reaction of Indonesian society uh, I never read uh, about uh, this whole background uh, influence the producing of uh, uh, Yan for issues mm -hmm. on uh, popular media in mm -hmm. Korea mm -hmm. um, um, <laughs> you I'm sorry if I'm troubling you <laughs> <laughs> well, and um, the Indonesian and the Korean situation is quite different. Um, the that's the one thing's clear. And a Co Korea Korea was colony of Japan, so there is a, the big differences between Japan, uh, uh, the Korea and Indonesia. And also, Indonesia is the um, the the time during the occupation time. Sometimes uh, that like Skalna was actually tried to manipulating Japanese um, in very strategic ways, and then they their goal is clear. They would like to do an independent, and the Japanese is also manipulating uh, the Skalna as well. But anyway, um, um, Indonesia is clear goal has a clear goal, and then they are fighting against national uh, national uh, the 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 independent. And it's through the time of the occupation and also the the post post war post post World War Two. However, Korean case and even though they are colonized, uh, they are colonized, and also the some of the Korean actually became the the Japanese military person and coming down to Indonesia. And then the even though the the it it looks like into Japan or the Japanese um the. Korean, uh, the majority, probably majority of the Korean discourse is very much anti-Japan in terms of the, the, the colon, colonial conditions. But some of the people are actually facilitated in, in, in helping to the Japanese um, military, um, um, military advance. And, 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 and for instance, one of the um, Korean specialists and who actually studied about Indonesia as well, and Utsumi, Professor Utsumi, uh, Professor Emeritus Utsumi Aiko was took uh, the interview with former uh, the Korean uh, military person, uh, paramilitary person, uh, the meaning is Kempetai. And then, um, and what the um, information is, uh, she, she has, her standpoint is for Korea. And then and she tried to be anti-Japan. And this is her mission. And this is not my bias. I think probably she said yes. <laughs> but anyway, um, and so so even though that person's interview and then and then and then there is uh, I think interview note was try to bring in how Korean people didn't want to join the military activities. And then, but uh, the writing about salary is the Korean um, military paramilitary people are three times higher than Japanese military and paramilitary person's salary. It's because they do not want to be in the part of it. 
but it's because of the money they joined um, and coming down to Indonesia and to become the Kempetai. And then um, and then some of the memo I was talking about, she was actually interviewed. And, and, and it's because of the, their salary is so high, they could go into the comp- brothel, military brothel many, many times comparing the Japanese. And then what they're saying, they are very happy to having the, um, uh, the Japanese comfort woman as for serving, serving them. They feel like they conquered. And then that kind of um, information is available. But meaning is the Korean situation is very much amb- ambiguous and ambivalent. And they would like to hide the ambivalence. They would like to showing how miserable and then they are moving anti-Japan. However, they are not fighting against Japan during the World War II. They are corny and they are actually facilitated. So that kind of uh, the historical evidence and fact might be the one of the trigger to more encouraging social sentiment to driving into the anti-Japanese movement. So that is the necessary to analyze and why that happens. But this is not, I'm not Korean specialist. So, so as a non-Korean specialist, my this is my anal- analogy and some people say in the political issues because the the society would like to see an anti-japanese uh, statement from the politicians but uh, it's it's not that simple that's what i think did i answer you uh, thank you Ibu Mayumi. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Ibu Nunu. nice questions yeah, yeah. Today. terima kasih <laughs> So uh, may, we have uh, 30 minutes, maybe uh, uh, my participant, our participant to ask Ibu Mayumi. I see Dimas Aditya uh, will be asked. Uh, please, Dimas, are you there? Hello? Or maybe anybody else to ask Ibu Mayumi? Anything? You don't yeah. need to hesitate. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe uh, I want to ask you, Ibu Mayumi, maybe uh, that's an <laughs> interesting topic, but uh, sometimes we can add to explanations difference between uh, comfort woman's meaning, our comfort woman uh, concepts to, have to, to learn in a woman history because so many people are confusing about that. Uh, what uh, what's the meaning of comfort woman? Mm-hmm. Is a uh, chukun ianfu or geisa? Such like that. Maybe mm-hmm. in my in our mind, uh, what's the kind of a uh, comfort woman? If we see about we see that your presentation and your PPT, uh, I think uh, uh, such uh, uh, changes and. Uh, Changes with uh, Sakura Kura Club mm. uh, uh, 1930 and 1940 40, until mm. between before uh, became uh, to be a comfort woman, walked walk comfort woman. The, the definition or the. Yeah, that's the that concepts of comfort mm, woman. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, the, the comfort woman, the word of the comfort woman is not so often appeared. Mm-hmm. Uh, the military uh, document, based on the military document, they are writing the woman who is working in comfort station, Yanjo. Mm-hmm. 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 So, so the the Yanjo, the, the comfort station is actually combining it, uh, both bar or restaurant mm-hmm. and brothel. Mm-hmm. So the woman who is working, who are working in the comfort station is called mm-hmm. as comfort woman. And mm-hmm. And, and some document are actually writing the comfort woman as well. Mm-hmm. And for instance, uh, the, the, uh, the Sakura Club's case, um, mm-hmm. it, the Sakura Club's o- Club also has bar and brothel. And mm-hmm. there is a rec- the time of the recruitment, women mm-hmm. actually can, can choose, uh, yeah. <laughs> but actually not choosing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And A and B, A mm-hmm. is brothel. B mm-hmm. is restaurant. So some mm-hmm. of the people say that, well, I do not want to work in a brothel, but I would like to work mm-hmm. the, the restaurant. That is the, the mm-hmm. choice actually 
beer, uh, mm-hmm. this beer host was actually bringing mm-hmm. it to the internment mm-hmm. camp. Mm-hmm. So, so the I do not think there is uh, the woman who is working there has uh, so much differentiations. Mm-hmm. And uh, once they are actually working in the <coughs> restaurant, eventually moving to the brothel section. Mm-hmm. 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 And so, so this is the way of the military use. Mm-hmm. And however, um, how should I say that? Uh, some of the document forced prostitution does not mm-hmm. count it as a military prostitutions. Mm-hmm. And the military prostitution meaning is not working in the comfort station. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the I have another um, research related comfort woman more focusing on medical. Mm-hmm. And the medical doctor is dealing with the comfort woman and mm-hmm. And um, the, because of the venial, venial disease is very, very mm-hmm. much concerning. Mm-hmm. And the comfort women are checking every week. It's because mm-hmm. of the military recommended the place they can go. And then it's supposed to be safer than any place else. More expensive than anything, any place else. Mm-hmm. And the military doctor even said um, in the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 or handbook for the, the living living in Indonesia and and then if you are going to thinking about going uh, the do, basically do not involve anything about the sexual relationship to the uh, local people because of venereal disease. However, mm-hmm. and and then particularly the people who do not have the license, street mm-hmm. goals, and then mm-hmm. and then people do not have any license. Those people mm-hmm. are nearly uh, nearly no checking of the uh, VD um, Mm -hmm. and then that is very dangerous but Mm -hmm. if you have to go and then Mm -hmm. if you decide to go and then that is your risk too but Mm -hmm. the comfort station is one place so so the military doctors clearly differentiated between one to another and however in these days, the discourse is more likely for, for forced prostitution is the comfort woman. So it's mm-hmm. just became more changing mm-hmm. place and discourse. But the discourse is changing and in, in time concept is changing as well. So mm-hmm. I really cannot provide my own concept, but I can provide me mm-hmm. how military was using Okay. Uh, the term of the comfort woman. In addition, uh, I would like to make it clear and I I always concern, um, I have been concerned all the time in the time of the forced prosti- differentiation between forced prostitution and prostitution is really yeah, yeah. dangerous mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. some of the women, for instance, Auchi's case is too willing to become the comfort woman. It's because mm-hmm. they have to survive. Mm-hmm. And, and then, and, but in, in the, uh, the brothel, they are looking down uh, some of the people are looking down those people as very much dirty women, that kind of mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. It's there is no um, it's sh- that we shouldn't we shouldn't differentiate we shouldn't um, pre- we we shouldn't uh, discriminate it against people who are mm-hmm. actually to become the uh, the prostitute. And mm-hmm. then once you are using a forced and not forced, and and then this and this yes. and then oh, that yeah. is. The same kind of work, but actually they are um, uh, what what do you call the um, creating the additional prejudice against women who who used to work as a uh, as a prostitute. So that's a major concerning I have been actually developing long period of time. Thank you, Ibu Mayumi. So maybe uh, may I this your answer. Uh, is a different between the comfort woman and Keisa? Is it true? <laughs> that is, that is the... Geisha yeah. supposed to be. Geisha uh, supposed to be. They can have okay. some talent. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, they can sing. They can dance, and uh, they can they can have particular type of the uh, some kind of game. It's not sexually uh, rated. Mm. And also they can actually listen to the customers mm. talk. Mm. It's more like the entertainer. Um, okay. So that's the geisha. But once you became an entertainer, some of the people became patron. And, uh-huh. then, and then eventually they might have some kind of network, sexual re- network too. So, uh-huh. so uh, they might do in uh, the uh, prostitution activities, but geisha uh-huh. is 
focusing on more entertainment talented side. Mm -hmm. So it's different. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Ibu Mayumi. So we, uh, we see that uh, one question in our chat room from Achi. Achi, our, our students in department. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Ibu, May Ibu Mayumi. My question is how to native Japanese facing the comfort woman discourse. Is this issue a popular in? Mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, okay. the, is, is this issue popular in yeah. Japan collective memory or they simply do not want to talk about it? Wow. <laughs> um, um, be honest. Um, things change quite a lot. Um, uh, the younger generation in particular, the some of the people who are very, um, um, has pay attention to the political uh, situation, they might uh, recreate in the discourse on comfort woman, meaning is the history became the more politicized ways. And some of the people are very objective and meaning is very much distant, keeping the distance. So as I said before, and I'm teaching occasionally bringing the issue of the comfort woman, they didn't care. They actually try to understand what's going on with, um, with evident document and returning to the historian supposed to using the primary source to understand what's going on. And they try to understand when and how and who, what kind of background that document was created and then that kind of things they are moving to. So there are the young generation, there are multiple people, multiple um, dimension is existed. So I think the discourse might be more um, uh, diverse. Um, however, older generation and like present time of age 60s and 70s, they are still believing uh, dichotomy of the 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 uh, the victim and the victimized that kind of <laughs> discourse and very comfortably stably sitting in an either or the black and white so that is existed too um so i cannot generalize in in particular um the popularity of the japan and also japan in general how the things is discourse was taking place and uh, so this is more like diverse. However, uh, it's because SNS period, the people who has more um, getting the voices politicized people. So there is the, some problem is existed. It's because of the internet uh, condition, uh, the, the society. Did I, did I yeah. answer? Achi, how about Achi? How about this um, Ibu Mayumi answer? You can off cam? Achi bisa off cam? Achi. Thank uh, you yeah, for the answer, Achi. Mrs. Mayumi. <laughs> Is that okay for you? Yes, thank you oh. for the answer. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Achi. Terima kasih. <laughs> So we have uh, 10, uh, 10 minutes, uh, more. so maybe any questions I'll, uh, to Ibu Mayumi, please? <coughs> Silahkan Bapak Ibu uh, yang ingin mengajukan uh, pertanyaan ke Ibu Mayumi. Ini tema yang menarik sebenarnya dari presentasi tadi yang berkaitan dengan Uh, comfort woman ya, jadi <coughs> jadi uh, satu uh, hal yang menurut Ibu Mayumi di awal tadi sebenarnya uh, tidak pernah dibicarakan karena kita cenderung uh, percaya bahwa tidak ada sumber yang <coughs> menceritakan atau bercerita mengenai uh, comfort woman, jadi tidak ada dokumen yang berceritakan mengenai uh, comfort woman, padahal sebenarnya itu ada, cuma laki-laki uh, kan kita ter, uh, ter terhalang dengan bagaimana membaca sumber. Silahkan, uh, please, uh, any question to if, Ibu if, Mayumi? If there is no questions, um, uh -huh. I can provide some information um, okay. Okay. About, um, about Comfort Woman's uh, interview. Um, mm -hmm. 
in 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 Indonesia, particularly um, uh, Bu mm -hmm. Maldiam and uh, Bu Suharti. Um, mm -hmm. I did the interview multiple times. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I said, the initial time wasn't so. Um, what do you call the uh, the? I shouldn't use mm -hmm. the word of the serious, but it's more like relaxed mm -hmm. and frankly mm -hmm. speaking. Mm -hmm. And each time I talk to them, um, the story became extremely um, what stable. Um, mm -hmm. It's not vari variety is not existed. It's more like the storyline is there, and then they're mm -hmm. actually talking about that way. And um, I was very un very much concerned. Uh, it's because of the each time I talk to them um, and especially the some of the sometimes um, but Maldium, um after talking to me and I I do not uh, basically I'm anthropologist so I do not doing any kind of question and answer type of the, uh, the interview I just mm -hmm. let them speak let them talk but um, but Maldium tend to getting sick meaning is the feel nausea and the the getting being being on and then and then and the need to lie down and mm -hmm. it's not it's not only age it's because of so much uh, stress i think mm -hmm. so i i really concerned about that one long period of time and then um and i thought probably this time the the one time i thought um the the time i met the um Bumaldium um, and Bustaharti. Uh, Bumaldium, the time I met Bumaldium, I, I changed the strategy. I bring the um, picture of the comfort woman, Dutch comfort woman, and then um, and and then she and and this this person was actually formerly comfort woman and like the same situation as you are you have been <coughs> in, and and then she she stated um, like the her, her childhood. Mm -hmm. And then um, the suddenly story changed. Um, um, it's more likely fitting to the the, the Dutch woman's experience. Um, so Dutch woman's comfort, Dutch comfort for my comfort woman, putting the pictures on it, and then Maldiam talking about um, how wealthy family she came out, and mm -hmm. so so the the. Uh, I start to concern if that kind of um, stimulus making her uh, speech and also the memory might be influenced. How many journalists mm -hmm. came to see her and the changing or the, the influence her memories and then that might be causing the, the stress. And that is the one thing I, I really thought about it. And some of the people say, saying that Maldiam's memory is wrong. Mm -hmm. And it might be true, but not all of them. And some of the things she actually insisted from the beginning. And she said that the recruitment of the comfort woman was three, well, have been, uh, had three waves, one time, two times, three times. And then she was recruited, first wave. And... Um, I really think that is really happens. And it's because of, it's very close to what happens to the uh, Romusha's recruitment. They have the three waves too. So the, think about the, um, the people who are working as a Romusha and also the people who are working to be in a comfort woman. And then they put, they might putting into the same boat and, and ascending to the, uh, the outer island and they might using the same strategy. It's very effective for the military eyes and also the local local um, the village head eyes too. So 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 that kind of things. The element she actually pre present was not really wrong. That's what I think. But at the same times um, the the scholars and and also the journalists and also the um, energy all type people has to be careful about the um, so much questions about particular one person. And in another time, I had really um, surprised things to us. At the time I was doing an interview with Suharti, there is a surprise thing that was taking place. She actually talking about the childhood. And, and um, 
but the usually comfort women's test uh, the interview they start to starting period is the time they are recruited they are not talk about before usually unless the uh, unless the the person like me asking a question and then Busa Haruti start to talk about the time of the, uh, the uh, recruitment. And then I asked her, I do not want to hear that one because I, I knew I, I heard many times from you and I would like to know more about you as a person. And then I start to asking um, this way. And then I would like to know how much you can remember far back of the, your childhood, for instance, my case is I remember the childhood, um, my own memory not influence something else like the pictures I have and then not those things, but I can trace back my memory as much as I can is the time I was five years old in a kindergarten experience because that experience is only I knew and I hide it all the time. <laughs> and then so so nobody knows but i still remember the moment i had a problem and then that the problem is there is a, the kindergarten i went to has a kitchen um kitchen uh, uh the toys and there is a wooden knife and everyone would like to use it chopping the, the leaves and, and and then that kind of things and then and chopping chopping the the soils too and i finally got my turn and i hold it and I didn't want to leave, but I wanted to go into the toilet. So I put in my apron, the, the kindergarten apron, and it has a large pocket and I went to the toilet. But, but unfortunately, I dropped that knife in a toilet bowl and that was gone already. It's not flashing time. It's just like the old, old, old style of the, the <laughs> probably Indonesian people knew old style toilet. That one I only knew. <laughs> and then I came out the toilet. My teacher asked me, and then, Mayumi, do you know where the, the kitchen knife is? And then, no, I don't know. I really do not know. I told, I don't know. I don't, I think someone has it. And then that girl, that girl has it. And then and I went to the toilet. I don't know, but I knew. I actually keep quiet. And, <laughs> and then I didn't tell anyone until age 18. So, so I said that memory to the Busuharti, and this is an old story, but I remember my pure own memory. I would like to know your pure own memory. Do you have those things? And then she suddenly cried. She started to quiet, and she think about it, and she suddenly cried, and she couldn't stop tears. So I was really, I got shocked because it was just like, I tried to getting some kind of casual information. But this is the important things. This is the anthropologist way of interview, but I do not want to hurt her. I didn't know what things causing the problem or the getting the tears. And that kind of research should be addressing. It's because of, they might getting public attention, but they may not to talk about, they may not want to talk about it. And then that itself is the history of most important social aspect at that time. But we actually focusing on so much politicized discourse, but the society at the time, natural setting was actually disappearing. And so from the anthropologist eyes, this is one of the things we may think about what we can do. Anyway, my story is over. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, that's a good story, Ibu Mayumi. Thank you so much. Your, yeah, wow, good, mm. good story. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, any questions maybe? If, uh, uh, before if my you make close decisions
maybe uh, we have no question anymore ibu okay. mayu miso uh, yeah uh, or maybe uh, we can discuss in uh, any time in right. uh, yeah so, uh, right. uh-huh. okay uh, thank you ibu mayu miso for the talk Thank you oh, very much. Pak Sarkawi, okay. Pak Sarkawi, Hello, Hello. Yeah. Hello, Pak Sarkawi. Mayumi, uh, Harton. Yep. yep. So, sorry, I'm not uh, on cam because there is a technical problem in my position. I'm in this hospital now. Oh. <laughs> so I want to say thank you very much for your interesting lecture today. Very, very interesting, I think. And... Uh, I have a small, a small, maybe maybe little information for you. In Surabaya, there is an uh, area uh, we call uh, Kembang Jepun. Japan. Hi. Yeah. Uh, Laos. <laughs> and Japan. Tau, tau. Is, uh, Japan. Yeah. And uh, some people believe that the area was the site of prostitution in Japanese mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So. You're right. In other areas such as Korea, Burma, is there any any location that refers to area they believe to be prostitution area during Japanese occupations? Burma uh, Yumi. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, that's a good question. Um, however, I cannot answer that question. Uh, the location of the prostitution place is actually using the former hotels. So the Japanese usually using the uh, Dutch facilities and convert into the comfort stations. So, so in a sense, if you are tra- if we can trace back to the where the Dutch, um, the um, relatively speaking high class prostitution area is, but probably those places is the place where where they are actually used. And Akebono Club, uh, Akebono Club, and also the um, the Sakura Club was very much located in the central area. Um, uh, the uh, uh, what the um, it's it's really central area. It's close to the um, uh, Hotel Indies, close very close to the Hotel Indies, and then there are uh, lots of high status Dutch hotel was actually located. That's the place they actually choosing to. Uh, establish the um, Sakura Club, but the small side of small small comfort station is existed too. That is actually choosing a place which is actually used formally by the Dutch people and uh, as a hotel. Or the Samaran case is actually using the um, the hotel uh, hotel and also Dutch mansion, Dutch people's uh, old old big house. So, so it's they they are very much using um, uh, recycle recycle <laughs> the uh, the the East Indies um, time period of facilities. But the Surabaya's one, the Kimban Japan uh, Japan, <laughs> that was actually um, I went there one time. <laughs> I did I I did the uh, I I wanted to know where that is and. Um, I think I went there. It's because the um, Pramudia was writing about the Michael, um, the, uh, the the Japanese prostitute, and and who who has suffering of VDs, and then around that time, and uh, the, the prostitution was uh, Japanese prostitution was actually um, uh, uh, located in Indonesia. But the Surabaya is one of the center for the Japanese prostitute so I went there um, but I couldn't see any kind of evidence and uh, I couldn't see uh, I shouldn't say evidence because evidence is actually wrote, uh, wrote down uh, Kimba Japan is not the Japanese prostitution area I don't know whether or not that information is true but but anyway um, I couldn't see that any kind of um, element of the remaining element um, used to be the comfort uh, not comfort but the prostitution areas. But I, yes, thank you very much. I went there too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Puma Yumi. Thank you. Interesting yes. questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bumur Diati <laughs> and Pa Horton. See you again. Thank you, uh, Pak Sarkawi. Uh, 
it's pity if not to see you in our room. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Ibu Mayumi. Perhaps we have only five minutes again, and maybe we can see that uh, not any questions anymore. So, maybe uh, we can close these sessions, maybe. So, I would like to thank you so much for your attendance today. Thank and you. thank you, Pak Horton. Uh, that's your, <laughs> our adjunct professor in our department too. And would come join with us today. And Ibu Mayumi, maybe if you come to Surabaya, don't hesitate to uh, ask me, to uh, call, calling me, to uh, whatever. Uh, I would like to help you and help Pak sorry, Horton. Too. Sorry, Ibu Murdiati. Yeah, yeah. This morning, I discussed with uh, Bulina Purianti. Oh, yeah? So mm -hmm. we invite Bumayumi to become a, a, a young professor like uh, Pak Horton mm. next year. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy. <laughs> Nice, nice to hear that, Pak Sarkawi. So thank you, Pak Sarkawi, and and You're everyone coming. in <laughs> and everyone in here to participate uh, our webinar today. Ibu Mayumi, may I close decisions? Ya, yeah. selamat pagi. Terima kasih semuanya atas kehadiran pagi ini. Uh, semoga apa yang sudah disampaikan Ibu Mayumi bermanfaat bagi kita semua dan bisa menambah uh, pengetahuan dan uh, bisa untuk pengetahuan dan uh, ini apa namanya uh, nanti untuk menulis di dalam artikel-artikel atau penelitian uh, selanjutnya. Dan terima kasih atas kehadirannya. Terima kasih. Thank you Ibu Mayumi because we have another webinar series again yep. in this moment. So uh, I would like to uh, submit and and send my email. Thank you, Pak Harton, Ibu Mayumi. See you. Thank you. See you again. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Yeah.